because we are super prepared, or actually because we're worried that we're not super prepared. How are you doing, Yen? I'm shiny there. How are you doing? I am doing very, very well. I'm just going to tweak some sound things. You're a bit loud. Two seconds. Beep, beep, beep. Shiny. Shiny. Uh, yeah, folks, we're a few minutes early. So how is everybody? Let me know in the chat how you're doing. Um, if you're not doing well, I'm sorry. But I hope everyone's doing fantastically and possibly even shinily. Generally, they have a transparent chat. Who likes my spotty like mug this evening? We were literally discussing whether or not we should have the chat on the side of the screen, of Ben's screen, um, as we started. So it's good to see you guys talk about the same thing. Sorry, Ben, you're talking about your mug. It's not the most exciting thing to talk about my mug, Jan. I was just uh, just checking. So yeah, we're all good. We are ready to play Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes in one hour's time. I have the bomb defusal manual here, and I have a different mic on, which means that I can stand like this, not looking at the screen, with all of you um, keeping me honest and not looking at the screen while you watch my, the progression of my ball patch, and I will be trying to help Jan out in one of the games. But that all happens in one hour's time. For now, we're going to be talking about the wonderful Godot, Godot, Godot or... Oh, good what, what else do people... What else? <laughs> What else do people say? Godot, Godot? Godot, Godot, Godot. Godot, 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 that's it. Has anybody else got any other ways of pronouncing this apart from Godot, Godot, or Godot, 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 Godot? How are they going to write it? They're just going to write the same word in different accents. Phonetics. Oh, we have a smart. We have a sophisticated... Um, oh, the terminal hacker in section three in the 3D course has a huge problem. What? Uh, really? That's been there a while. Tell us what that problem is, Bindi, and we've got a couple of minutes. We've got three minutes till the official start time. And I didn't write that one, so I'm going to dance with my dragon. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a, you will have a bit of a delay. I wonder what we can do about these Zoom delays, Jan. They are the bane of our lives, these things. Um, have you considered the, teleportation? Not, have not considered teleportation. Okay. Is there anything funny we can do about... Um, Adjusting this stuff. I haven't not seen it without settings. moving to lower latency video on the sharing, like not HD or something. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Well, we've got longer-term plans to sort that out, guys. We can yes. use uh, we can use other clever things like Wirecast and the like. But Bindi, I uh, don't know what the background noise is sounded like. A uh, fan starting stopping my monitor is all in blah blah blah. I was worried. What background noise is? It? Oh, I see. Okay, he's making me. He's making me nervous, Bindi. Bindi, I hate you in a in a loving sort of way. Um, I was wondering how a section that's been in a course with thousands of people going through it have uh, has got something wrong. But his, the huge problem is that Terminal Hacker has a sound asset in the background, and he thought his monitor was going fizzle, crackle, popple, bangs, which is a technical <laughs> term which you guys are welcome to share. That's the, the technical term, by the way. It is indeed. Um, what's this? Coded Vamp. There, but... Hi guys, I'm sorry if this has already been asked as I've just tuned in. When will the Godot course be coming to Udemy? You know what? It hasn't. And we're due to go live in about 30 seconds. So that can be our opening question. It can. We'll keep you going. We'll keep you holding on there, Coding Vamp, for... Um, well, the, the truth is we don't have a dead, dead, dead set launch date yet, but we will soon. It's going to yep. be in August, um, and we'll re-cover re this in just a second after the time of the stream has actually started. Basically, we're trying to get to 10 hours of content. So that when we get to 10 hours, so we can project when we might get to 10 hours, um, in which case we've got to leave some buffer or we just send it live when it gets to 10 hours. It won't be long. It's a matter of weeks now, Max. Yeah, I, I will be surprised if it's three weeks or longer than that, to be honest. We are, ch I mean, churning out content pretty fast. I mean, I think if between we us, we've done... Ourselves. Oh, it's time. Let's start the stream. I am writing this, so guys, because we can't, if you could write your comments slowly because we can't read very fast, that actually does make sense in a real-time chat. It's like that old joke about somebody writing a letter, you know, a handwritten letter, like, I'm writing this letter slowly because I know you can't read very fast. That, of course, doesn't work. Um, but in a real-time chat, it does. I digress somewhat. <laughs> Jan, wait, let's start this Godot thing. So the Godot course will be live on Udemy at some point. It'll be in August. It won't be too late in August. It'll probably be on a Tuesday or a Thursday, and it'll be in the first half of the month. So I mean, what I'm aiming this that this is right. aim. This is an intention, not a not a schedule, schedule timetable. Um, aiming for the first week of August. It's better for you guys. It's better for me. It's better for Ben. Um, but we want to make sure that not only is there enough for the Kickstarter backers, but when people on Udemy go live on the course, there's a whole chunk of content. Ten hours is the internal goal, and I mean we're already sneaking up on five hours, so we're doing pretty good. Um, all right, so I've got a first link to share with everybody. Should I slam it in the chat, Yen? Well, why don't we talk about what it is and, and do that? Yeah. Um, so okay. people have been 
making variants of this project and running with Godot. So Ben, what's this? What have you got for us? Do you want to do, you want to do it on your screen or do you want me to do it on mine? I'll put it in the chat. Uh, I haven't actually looked at this on my screen, so why don't you do it on yours? I'll do okay. the next one. Okay, no worries, because that means I've got to bring up this dreaded chat that nobody wants me to show, but I shall do it. I'm not scared. Oh, you had two monitors. Brand new, fresh browser. Okay, so the first thing we're going to show you guys then. Uh, no, Jan, you, sh you share it, mate. It's in the chat, because then we can see your face much more easily. Okay. And I'll tell them what it is. So we're, one of our magic students, um, Van Dalk. Van Dalk, are you on the stream? It'd be awesome to hear. They're hearing you before they see you. You are a little bit out of sync, but that, that's the perils of Zoom, I think. I will make sure I'm in sync. <laughs> as in the band. Okay, so tell, tell us what Van Dalk's doing here, Jan. Van Dalk has actually made, and this is before the course came out, but made, I mean, you can see it here, they got an engine back in 2016. This is based on, um, I was gonna say Hoppy Days. No, it's not, it's based on Flappy Bird with some roguelike elements. And there's some really nice touches here. I mean, the great graphics and so on. But if we look at the video, you can actually see it playing. Really nice particle effects on the thrust, great gravity, lovely parallax going on here, some strong collision. And then when we get into some uh, zappiness, I'm not going to skip ahead because this is really it's a bit nice. like Jetpack Joyride, as my son, or my son calls it, Jetpack check Ride, I think he calls it. Uh, why, is your, why is he writing checks? He's way too young to have a checkbook. But if you look at the, um, the laser graphics, they're really nicely done. Like, this is very smooth. Lots of animations, lots of tentacles and blobbiness. It's just a lovely feel. And it's a nice little, what is this, an Android game? So this is just something we want to share with you, something that can be put together. This is before our course, like this is, you know, coming up to two years. So this has got a 2 point, I would say 2.3, 2.2, really fun stuff. Um, so that's my first thing I want to share. Uh, we're just okay, so the next thing was you wanted to share an old bunny sprite. So here it comes, alternative bunny sprite in the chat. Have a look. This is from RBNZ Dave, or have that's pronounced. Um, and you may as well keep sharing your screen, Jan, because the lip syncs out. It's probably less distracting for people if you stay, if our video stays small. Okay. Boop. Uh, that'd probably help if I share the screen, like so. Um, oh, bunny this sprite. Tell, tell us the story, Jan. This is from R, B, N, Z, Dave. I think I got them right. The, the letters are definitely in there. I may have shuffled them up. Um, and he just wanted to play with, I think, Kriter, Kriter, Kriter. Um, wanted to make his own sprite. Didn't want to use the bunny thing. Wanted to run with it, which is something we encourage you to do. And he made this lovely little fox animation. And there's some videos on Discord he's posted or some GIFs he's posted of the way it animates and runs. And it's, it's just adorable. Um, and it's using all the same stuff we've done in course. So he's, he's making Hoppy Days, which you guys, if you guys haven't seen Hoppy Days, I can show you that in a minute. Um, using Hoppy Days to make a, a Fox game. I don't know what he's going to call it. Maybe it's going to be Foxy Days. Haven't figured that out yet. Uh, awesome. So that's the next thing I wanted to share. Uh, what else we got? Oh, right. Double uh, X Lloyd from the forum, uh, who I think is also on Facebook. Uh, well, no, I don't need a new version of Godot. Um, is going through Hoppy Days and wanted again to use a different asset pack. Now he's gone with a different Kenny asset pack. And what he's done is he's downloaded the entire alien platformer thing and put all of these things in the tile map. Um, it's still very much a work in progress, but lovely work. And right now it's just a very simple intro part. A little can, we, can we see it, Jan, or is it hard to get? Uh, are you able to see it now? I should be sharing the screen. I can just see uh, your calendar right now. Uh, well, that's wrong. <laughs> Good job it's got nothing incriminating in it. I don't put incriminating stuff on that. Let's uh, share my screen. You right? How's that? Why you're... That's considerably more like a Godot game than your sparse looking calendar. So, right now, there's some work that needs to be done with these collisions, but if I show you the tile map he's brought in, he's brought in everything from this. It's one of my favorite uh, Kenny packs, but he's brought in everything. So it's very easy just to throw these assets in there. Lots of character in this stuff, so it's it's really easy to make this. In this case, it's going to be a Mario clone, but really nice work. One thing I'm not quite sure of, and I think he uploaded this a little early, why there are two tile maps. Um, it might be one's going to be background, one's foreground. I'm not sure, but this one has different assets in it, or some different assets. Uh, or maybe it doesn't. Did, did, was the castle in there? Uh, if you've not looked at Kenny's stuff, by the way, really recommended. I mean, just does incredible stuff. Um, and it's all... CC0, so Creative Commons Zero license. So you can use it with no attribution. You can use it commercially for education purposes, which is great for me. And it's, you know, really nice stuff. So awesome. I don't want to save that. 
Slight, it's so successful, though, it slightly risks being typecast, right? It's great for prototyping, for teaching yourself and all the rest of it. I wouldn't use this for a high-scale um, commercial launch, right? But if you want to teach yourself or replace the assets later or just get some things. Meanwhile, I like this one. Uh, Gabrielle Ferrari from Facebook, as you can see, has made a variant of Hoppy Days that has a few things in it. First off, let's just go back a bit. He's got this character selector, so you can actually pick between the two bunnies. Uh, for those of you going through the, the Hoppy Days thing already, you'll know that I give you two variants. There's the brown bunny and the pink bunny. He's put in a system where you can pick them, which is very smart. But also, check this out. Moving spikes. Oh, never mind. This happens to me all the time. Um, I die whenever I'm recording video. But he's got a nice little working uh, GUI up here by Ben's face on my screen. And he's using tweens right now to move these spikes. Now, we are going to be animating um, a bunch of things later. My original prototype did use tween. And then Lars from the Berlin School of Game Design pointed out, everything I'm using tween for can be done in the animation player, which is simpler and more powerful. So we just switched to that. Tween is going to be used. I think the first time we're actually using tween will be Cube Dude Kickabout um, to change the background color depending on who scored. Cube Dude um, but, Kickabout, just to be clear, being the uh, two-player local multiplayer football game that you and Mikey whipped together one fine evening at my house, right? Yep, which accidentally became part of the course. That wasn't um, originally what it was for, but I'm really glad. And then Kyle Slezensky, I have so much trouble with this last name. I'm sorry, Kyle, um, has been making this really spooky little game. Um, this is actually the reason why he backed the course on Kickstarter. He has this idea he wants to do and got to. He's playing with parallax here. The sprites are a little different, but look at this vampire sprite. Um, I just love the character in this thing, and he's just throwing this together to see how it works. I love how the thing... The tearing we're getting, I presume, is just because of the Zoom share, but that's cool. Uh, yes, Zoom is not ideal for sharing this. This looks much better. I mean, he's encoded it to Facebook, which I'm now playing through Facebook into Zoom, which is then going to Twitch. So by the time you guys see it, this is <laughs> second hand. But we get the intention. Awesome. The other thing I thought we might be able to do that would be interesting for people is show them the, uh, if they want to see how the, the course is uh, shaping up, maybe show them the curriculum behind the scenes. Maybe show them the Udemy sure. curriculum page. And we can talk through what I added today and in just general uh, have a look behind the scenes in the course. The intention in this stream, guys, is to catch you up with what was happened on week one and how people are doing. So, so here is my behind the scenes uh, curriculum. And this is what we see when we're doing all the notes so and everything. let's take it one, one page at a time and have a little review. Maybe, no, that's good. Maybe uh, splodge mi control minus once, just slightly smaller font. Boop. There you go. OK, so in the first section, we start talking about why you'd use Godot, how to use the course, installing it on a PC and Mac. Uh, and that's it. So super quick section one for you guys. Section yep. two, we get into GDScript, right? So uh, Yes, we discover in GDScript. So um, this is really the basics of coding and the basics of GD script. Um, there are some people I know who are very experienced coders and they kind of want to skip through this, but if you haven't used GD script before, you should probably look at this. I want to make this a bit bigger. There we go. Um, That's cool. And then the stuff that I've added in today, if you scroll down a little bit, normal structure, by the way, we've got quizzes like this uh, every 10 lectures. Um, and then I've been adding in uh, using Get with Godot, which yep. is uh, version control. I also give people the option of just using zip files if you're really new to coding. Uh, how to install Visual Studio Code, and then getting the mono and your C-sharp version of Godot set up. So those three videos went in just today with their corresponding quiz items. And, if uh, you've and there's a whole bunch more videos course, to go in, in I here. recommend you do this bit, really. Um, yeah. I don't use Visual Studio Code. I did try it, as Ben recommended, and I recommend everyone tries it. Some of you will have the same experience I did, which is it's really good. It doesn't do everything I, I need. As Ben points out in this video, it's not a completely integrated ID. It's mostly integrated. And the things it can't do are the things I want. But Ben finds this much easier. So use it, play with it for a couple of hours, and then figure out what's better for you. So absolutely try this, even if you think the current system is fine. The Godot Engine one is great. Yeah, and then you, ben, basically... The the bottom line probably is if you're just writing in GD script, then maybe just stick in Godot. But if you want to go multi-paradigm uh, and do C-sharp as well, you definitely might want to just consider using Visual Studio Code. All right, I'm going to try and clean those annotations, and we can go down. So then there's going to be a bunch on the Hot end of that days. section. So all of this stuff has been done in the last week, really, the last 10 days. Good progress. Um, not bad, right? Starting with planning hoppy days, we always like to start all of our sections with, here's how we're planning a game. Um, you want to learn how to make games through coding, well, part of that is planning it. Before you code anything, you should know the kinds of features you want, right? Um, where we get the assets from, uh, again, using Kenny assets, I can show you the ones we're using, we're using the jumper pack. 
but I've pared them down. Rather than provide you with all of the assets, I'm just showing you the ones I'm using. I also put the link in there. So if you want to go get another one of his assets or the full asset and play with it, you can. Awesome. And then- Also, I'm noticing Godot, Godot versions are coming out rapidly. We seem to be on 3.0.5, I saw today. Just we are, 3.0.5 just came out. I'm not too worried about it because it fixes two things. One is an export for Android and one is signals in C sharp, which isn't that useful for me. Probably more useful for you, but I'm thinking that 3.1 is coming out soon. So I might wait for that. Well, I'm going to plow ahead anyway, and uh, it's good to know that the signals issues are sorted. So, okay, okay that's cool, yeah? Yeah, um, so we start here just to walk you through it with um, basic nodes, right? What's a physics body 2D? And when, what's the difference between a kinematic body, a rigid body, a static body? Animated sprite, these are all nodes. And then here we start getting into, okay, what's the best practices? I actually did get some feedback today where someone didn't like um, my coding, well, our coding style, because I, I, I learned this from you. That's going to happen, right? Different people have different ideas of the difference between clean and obfuscated, obscured, that's the word, code. Uh, we do some fun parallaxy things. I actually broke our automated upload system with this video. Oop, where'd it go? No, I'm moving things. Did I move? Oh, no. Do, do, do. That's fine. I think that's where that lives. Um, yeah, don't do this because it confuses things. I broke our upload system because I uploaded a video that's under two minutes long. And Sam, who wrote the automations, said, it never occurred to me someone would make a video that small and it wouldn't upload. So he had to rewrite the code for that to work. Um, hmm. Into parallax backgrounds, which is a lot of fun. And then the making of the GUI. I'm, I'm really happy. With, the GUI video took ages to record because I was just having one of those days when nothing went. I mean, you can hear it in my voice, right? I'm speaking way too fast today. I used to teach public speaking. Um, but the GUI tools in Godot are so flexible. They're so incredibly helpful, right? If, if you just get into the control nodes and start playing with them, things like X, no, H box container, which is, okay, everything that's a child of this, just organize this in the order I give you horizontally or vertically or in a grid. And it just makes things so much simpler. And then another quiz. Awesome. So we've got just a couple questions here I'd like to address. Break something, give me one second. La, la, la. Got a question here, Jan, from, um, well, firstly, a comment from Chris A. Thanks very mm -hmm. much, Chris, for subscribing to us. And looking forward to the Git video. I'm afraid the Git video is going to be quite disappointing. I don't go into detail about how to set it up and work it. That is something we still haven't created the content on because it spans all of our courses. And at some point, we will make a YouTube series. So if you, it's not going to show you the details. It's going to show you how to set up Git specifically for for Godot, but it's only really going to show you where to get the Git ignore from, et cetera. It's interesting. Um, ben and I had a conversation a few weeks back about there are certain core concepts that work throughout most of our courses, and it'd be good to have a separate series of videos on YouTube that just have them all. Bindi raised the exact point the other day. Ben talks about what an if condition is in the, in the, uni, in the Unity course. Maybe you should just use that. Um, I think that's probably coming. Yeah, so we're thinking about how we can do more generic things like that and get them to YouTube. But YouTube's not an initiative for us at the moment. Um, just on that topic, Jan, if you bring up the latest link to the repo that I showed you, and then we can show them this football game just briefly. It's in the latest. chat. Oh, it's, in just the chat. A, it's just the link to the repo because Keith has said, is there a way of spotting additions to the course? So firstly, yes, whenever I add a new video to the course, I send it to Game Dev TV Twitter. And I also say something similar but different on the Godot Facebook page. But also, there's the repo. So Jan will just bring um, you up that You say repo. it's in the chat. Where, oh, which chat? The Twitch the chat. The Twitch chat. I'm sorry. I was looking in Zoom. No, no, that's OK. Groove is in the heart. There you go. Ro Discovering Godot. So if you go to this Discovering Godot repo, and for instance, if you were to click on Looney Lips, oh. uh, for, well, you don't even need to click it to see that it was updated three hours ago. Um, and now once you're in it, if you click on 13 commits up towards the, the top left there, that there, you'll see all the commits, and you can see that I've added these three videos today. So that's another way of keeping an eye on it. But no, if you want actual proactive push notifications, keep an eye on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, and on the Facebook. While we're here, uh, this Jason video was the least successful one I did, uh, partly because the code was originally written by Ben, and I understood it, but I hadn't internalized it. So I recorded the video, and it was, let's be frank, kind of all over the place. So you noticed committed a day ago, just re-recorded it based on your feedback, right? It's like, yeah, you keep patching it and editing it, but now it's a bit too piecemeal. Like it's, there's too many edits, too many changes, too many, hi, future Yan here, I done goofed. Um, so it's just, I think this one is a lot better, but you know what, you don't like it, let me know and I'll do it again. That's what we do here. Do you awesome. want to see Cube Dude Kickabout? Yeah, let's look at Cube Dude Kickabout. That's a good idea. 
Okay, this oboe is shape. Uh, Daz, thank you very much for sharing that. Udemy also has a way of telling you that your progress through a given section has just reduced because we have added more lectures. So that's an important point as well. All right. So during the Kickstarter, Mikey and I did uh, a live stream together, a kickstart stream together, whatever they call it, uh, talking about importing Blender. So here is Cube Dude. And as a result of that stream, we stayed up for four hours and just made a game. We just chatted and said, this would be fun. And we did. We didn't think it'd go in the course. So here is Cube Dude Kickabout, which is designed to be played by two people. I'm trying to play it by myself, and it's confusing me. Uh, okay, <laughs> two different purple is on this one. There we go. Um, but it's a, it's a really nice, simple game. And it's probably, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to chat and control two hands at the same time. This is a bit, uh, I'm not a drummer. There we go. In. So it's, it's, a, it's a really simple little game, um, very fun. It's incredibly silly with two people local. Um, you can play this with a controller, we're gonna tighten up the code, but what I really like about this is this is where we really play with inheritance, which I know, Ben, you were talking about in the RPG course the other day. So I've got a uh, script here, no, script. Where's my scripts? Sorry, I haven't looked at this in a while. Well, let's go to the character. I've got a scene here called character, and it's just my default character and character has all the behavior in it, right? But you'll notice here I've got some variables, left, right, up, down. Um, I actually saw an even better way of doing this on Kids Can Code Stream yesterday, which is amazing. And the movement is um, based on left, right, and up and down, right? And then when we go into player one and player two, those are instances. So it extends the player script, and the only thing it adds is what the controls are, which controls you're using, um, are you using uh, UI left, right, up, down, or are you using, boop, there it is, uh, UI left, right, up, down, two, okay? So that's the only thing that changes, and player one switches direction on spawn. So it's a really simple piece of inheritance. And then, as you can see when we play it, I mean, you can't see my fingers, but WSAD is over here, and cursor is over here, which is really hard to do at the same time, and somehow I still miss, um, never was very good at football. Other thing I like, these lights are following the ball, and they're doing that using the uh, groups system in Godot, which is a way of transmitting, I guess, a signal. We're calling a function on everything with that group tag. So it's a really nice thing to, to show you how it works. Really nice thing to show you how it works. Brilliant grammar. I should be so, a Yeah, no, good testimonial from Chris A. Um, he's saying he's halfway through Looney Lips, and he wants to say that you've exceeded his expectations. The primary driver is the clarity of his teach, <laughs> her teaching, and his obvious uh, enthusiasm for the subject. So that's awesome. Good job, Jan. And Shiny. the other thing to say is that people can build Cube Dude Kick About themselves using the Ble Complete Blender character, not the Ple Complete Blender creator, but the Blender character creator course. That's the very asset that you build yourselves and learn how to rig and animate in yep. that course. So that's that. And the awesome only other thing I've source. got here to show before we get deep into questions, one I've showed a few times before, but I'm really proud of this game. This is the current incarnation of Heistmeister, which I've not played with since Hoppy Days came out of Code Review, because clearly that's not the priority. Uh, if you're not aware of this, after Hoppy Days, currently the plan is after Hoppy Days, we'll be doing this. This is a top-down stealth game, one player. Um, and there's two mechanics. So I'm this dude up here, and I will face the mouse. And there are some guards and some cameras. No, oh, there's two guards there. But what I can do is switch on night vision. But if I'm in night vision, I can't see where they're seeing. So the gameplay is balancing out what they can look at and where they are. And I've also put in a suspicion meter here that animates a nice little clockwork thing. The final fanciness that I put in here, let's uh, run to the computer. Excuse me, guard, not very good. This computer here generates a random code. Actually, it's not generating it. Um, this code is 9119, and then I go over here to this door. Where are you? Is that green like a debug mode, Yen, what are you saying? This green or, here? This right, is when it goes green, is that night vision mode? This is night vision. In night and vision, you... I can't see what they're looking at. But when I come out of it, I can see what they're looking at. Ah, okay, cunning. Sorry, I missed that. So, so you've got a choice between seeing the environment and seeing what the cameras can see. It's a risk management thing, right? Either yeah, I can yeah. see everything or I can see what they can see, but I can't see both at the same time. Cool. I'm um, looking forward to doing the review on this. I haven't reviewed this one yet, of course, so that'll no. be fun. Uh, there's some fancy... Oops, press the wrong button there. Uh, there's some fancy things going on here. Um, 
let's say fancy. Uh, one of them is that the codes are generated by combination and I can create as many of these locked doors as I want, or locked computers I want, and then link the computer to the doors that it has the codes for. I could possibly randomize them. But the combination thing is just very simply, how long do you need for your code? Generate that and return it, right? So if I go to my locked door, uh, where are you? Locked door, there you are. Oh, no, computer, computer has the code. Sorry, it's been a while since I did this. Um, you'll see that it's just calling the combination, um, setting the combination when it's ready, and then throwing that to the doors. So you can have as many locked doors and, and things as you want and make this as dangerous as you want to. So it's, it's a fun little 2D game. And look how clean and simple the code is in GD script as well. You keep unsharing your screen. Yeah, I'm sorry, I thought we were done. I'll go back to it. Sorry, right. no, it doesn't matter. It just for consistency, we might as well keep it. So, so look how clean and simple the GD script is. Um, yeah, really nice, Jan. And also the game design. I'm really impressed with what you put together there. It's really a lot, it's a of, lot fun. of fun. Now, this is before we came up with that string reference uh, solution because I know yeah, the, well, the logic is, is all look totally, how clean and oh. Uh, well, this we, is all totally unreviewed code, right? So there's lots of string references in here. There's lots of things, magic numbers, yeah. etc. They'll all be gone before we teach the course, of course. But um, oh, course, this is course, smart, right? by the way. Um, I forgot to put this in. <laughs> okay, so um, here we are. Well, I can also be a box. <laughs> if I'm a box, they can't see me. Even when you're moving. But what's the disadvantage of being a box? I'm really slow. Okay, but if they can't see you, why does it matter that you're slow? Well, what I'm going to do is make it so that you can't interact with objects if you're a box, right? Okay, because yeah, it sounds like you need another penalty for being a box. Well, I was also going to make it a one time thing. You can use well. this once in a level. So we showed that we're going to be showing people how to do line of sight, of course, as well. Yeah, line of sight. Uh, this is a really nice. Uh, basically, I was playing with collision layers and collision masks and realized, well, if I can change the collision layer and they can only see things on collision layer one, then why don't I just give you another collision layer and put you as a box? Um, in the final game, there'll be a limited amount of times you can do that and you can. Um, you won't be able to interact with things while you're a box. But it's just a nice little throw to, what's that name? Metal Gear Solid, right? So yeah, if you've yeah. always wanted to sneak around a facility in a box, this is your chance. Awesome. And that's all my sharing stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So we've had a good progress. Good, good first week, basically, is the bottom line on here with Godot. So thank you very much, everybody, for being um, in the course. There's the lifetime members, that is, who've got, currently got access uh, and the Kickstarter backers, of course, have got access. If you, if you, anybody on this stream didn't see the uh, Kickstarter, that's the link to it. Of course, it's finished now, so it's too late. Thank you very much, everybody who got us over the finish line with that Kickstarter. Yeah, that was that was super cool of you. Keep an eye out on our events page on Twitch because we're going to have more in this uh, discovering Godot 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 series. Um, and why don't I stop sharing my screen and we can start taking some questions? Yeah, sure, go for it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> very good, Yan. They, well, I, do, I use Zoom with my Chinese students and, you know, Blue when you're 10, Blue that's really funny. I might put the questions on. I'm going to put the chat on the screen now just because <gasps> if we're taking questions, then why not? So excuse like, Yan's lip sync and excuse Yan's lips. And let, <laughs> nothing wrong with your lips, old mate. <laughs> Can't you stick your whole fist in your mouth? Uh, yes. It's got to earn us some cheers. Come on, let's do it. Oh. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's... Really, you can't unsee that sort of stuff. Ow. Okay. It can probably come out now. That's not good. All right, awesome. So, guys, questions about Godot, the future of Godot, Godot, except and now the second fist. Yeah, great. Poems oh, about <laughs> poems about toucans. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for that morph breed. Appreciate. Remember, in fact, I've forgotten to ask you to uh, to engage in the community forum as much as I'd like to in my content in Godot. But do uh, go to the community forum. Really light up the community forum for Godot. So that, uh, so, that it, so that it attracts people to it and is a thriving place to be. So there's your link to the forum. Yeah, um, and there's some yeah, really so great good. stuff being shared there right now. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Anybody can go there, it's completely public. Um, oh, well done finding all these new, uh, Dan, Dan Bio, welcome. Well, well done finding all these new uh, emotes. We've got, uh, most of us now, just need a Sam one. Um, he says oh, he wants a new. Yet. Well, here's he Sam from a very great hey, distance. Guys, do you prefer the zoomed in ones like that or the ones that Mikey put together, the zoomed out? I mean, they're subtly different, but do you prefer like Lucy's one stroke Mikey's or mine stroke Yan's? Whether, you know, should our face be like, like right in your face or just a little bit less in your face? What, what do you like? Let us know. I am trying to get a new poll system going. It's not, it's a bit complicated and not working so well. Um, 
So I think for the short term, we're going to keep using this bit poll because it works. But we are trying to look for a poll where subscribers only can vote in polls without needing to spend bits. Uh, yep. But, you know, if we can't find something that works as well, we may end up sticking with the bit poll because they do they go down all right. It's just that the numbers we get back from them are so small at the moment. Two things we don't like about the bit poll. One is that um, the numbers the votes we're getting are tiny, but then the channel's small at the moment. And the other thing is the way that people can vote with more than one bit. And that doesn't matter when there's much less than 100 votes. But as you get anywhere near 100 votes, then you can't tell whether a vote came from a single vote or from somebody voting 100. And we don't want people who are willing to spend more money to bias the, uh, yeah. to bias the poll. I it don't also, mind people spending a little, but I don't want, want them biasing it. So It can feel a little icky saying, I want your opinion. Pay me. Um, Good question sure here enough, from Kablami Junior 96, who, as you know, comes from a proud tradition of Kablamis. Uh, much re regard for Kablami Senior and Kablami Senior Senior. Is the Godot course going to be only 2D, or will there maybe be some 3D stuff too? There's definitely 3D stuff. That Cube Dude Kickabout game is the first 3D game. Uh, we definitely want to mix up 2D and 3D because Godot can do both pretty well. Uh, yep. And it does. It has separate pipelines. If, um, if there are questions, to make it easier to spot, use a question prefix or mark the icon for subscribers. Exactly, Ovo. Thank you for that. So question helps a bit. The icon really helps for the subscribers. Uh, yep, something like that. And I do keep warning that at some point this, cha this, this channel will go subscriber only for the chat because it's going to be our way of managing it of and of differentiating and making yet another reason to subscribe. But how do you ask a question? Just like that, Bindi. <laughs> awesome job. Um, hey, Swamp Gator, Elizabeth, if you don't mind me using your name, if you do, then, uh, then disregard the previous testimonial. <laughs> it's ridiculous in these court films where they say disregard that witness's testimo uh, testimonial or testament or whatever they say, um, testimony. They're like, dude, it's been said, you can't disregard it. But anyway, cool. Awesome to have you here. Um, disregard everything he just said. Yeah, disregard. You can't, can you? You can't unhear things. Just like you can't unsee Yan with his fist in his mouth. That was that was bad. And Look, I bet it's been. I have clicked, come on Yan. here and seen you doing handstands. Uh, I've seen you streaming from electric unicycle. I'm not even going to talk about what it looked like when we prepared for this stream. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Shirtless image. Yes, that's happened. Um, yeah. So Jason Lee said, will there be a course to integrate multiplayer? We no, we don't know yet. We specifically retracted. I specifically had to swallow my something or other pride, I think it was, and retract the idea of multiplayer from the course. Let's clarify. There is local multiplayer. If you're talking about Steam or Xbox Live or whatever else, don't know yet. Um, the short Not answer in this is course. I'd love to. Not in this course, but if the course is successful, there'll be another course that, that can focus on multiplayer. So. Um, which is the question, right? Will there be yeah, a... Is, and we don't know at the moment. It just it, we, We've got to see enough pull for that to make it worth it. But there will be local local mo multiplayer, so that will be cool. Yeah, so again, this is an intention, not a promise. Um, I would mm -hmm. love to make Godot as core to what we do as Unity and Unreal, right? And have like spin-off courses and Godot RPG and Godot uh, Pokemon style, whatever, right? But to do that, we have to demonstrate that this is worth taking my time out to not do Unreal, Unity, board games, game design, storytelling, everything else. Um, so I'd love to. The more people we can get in the course, the better. Yeah, let's just see how, how, how it goes once it's, once it's out there. Uh, so Stony. Ellie, evening from Germany. Stony Web, thanks for being here. Will any of the projects use physics? They're already starting to. And I think that we ought to, we, we use basic move and slide physics. We ought to have a, a project later in the game that takes a bit more advantage of physics. Well, Cube did we kick about has physics, right? Because the ball is just a sphere. There's a physics object. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice to make a physics puzzler. It would it'd be nice mm -hmm. to do everything. Keep an eye on the Trello board. You got a link for the Trello board, Jan? Um, yeah. I mean, not handy, but yeah, I possess one. Okay, I'll go and get it for you. No problem. Got it. I'll... Too late. Slow. Oh, I'm sorry that I'm slow. <laughs> I'm, we're all sorry that you're slow. How about a pool or snooker game? Interesting. How about a pool game with really heavy square balls that don't move? No, never mind. A pool game with square balls. Talk about putting a square peg in a round hole, Jan. Yeah, it should be quite easy. Just want to remind people in half an hour holes. we're going to be playing. Sorry? If the circumference of the hole is smaller than the area of the sphere, it should be pretty easy. Area? If the, if the side of the square is bigger than the diameter of the circle is what you're saying. Then if the circumference it. is area, I didn't, uh, not math. Not bad. <laughs> uh, we pasted the Trello syllabus. Put your ideas on there. 
uh, imagine the demand for more popular Godot courses will appear, fingers crossed. Yeah, Chris, I hope so. But you know, if it does or it doesn't, we've got tons of demand all over the shop for all different courses. So uh, we just need to deploy ourselves uh, properly. My main focus at the moment is getting Game Dev TV's beginner courses really, really strong. Have a strong suite without any particular engine preference of at least three engines uh, and get to a million beginners and then we'll p start picking up the more intermediate and advanced stuff. Yeah, like, meanwhile, if you're interested in taking things like bowling and some of the games we've made in okay. other things, I was very deliberately not repeating games we've already done, but Kalekian on um, Discord has been doing exactly that. He's been turning Project Boost, for example, into from Unity into um, Godot and just going through the projects. So that's a really good way of playing with it. I'm eating a broad bean from our own garden my daughter just bought me, which is cool. Um, not great to do it on here because of the delays, but we, we're conceiving a little game that's a bit like rock, paper, scissors. It goes like this. It goes, it goes the idea is that uh, Unity is better than Godot because it can do more and it's more powerful. And then, um, and then the idea that Unreal is better than Unity because it's more powerful and it can do more. And then uh, Godot is better than Unreal because it's simpler and much quicker to get into. And by the time you get round to Unreal in your journey, you may have disappeared up your own bottom in terms of a complexity trap. So yeah. it, they're all great and it's a question, it really is a bit like rock, paper, scissors. You've got to kind of find the thing that's right for you and right for your project, so. Kalekin has pointed out he hasn't got as far as game dev yet. I'm sorry, this is future, Yan, where you have, and it was brilliant. Um, my apologies. Um, Keith, have you thought of doing a game design course using Godot? Um, as Oboe has pointed out, I does. Um, I already have a game design course, and I'm re really proud of it. Actually, it's called the Board Game Designer, um, and it's on Game Dev and it's on Udemy, um, and that's specifically about game dev without using an engine. I think the moment you start getting into just pure game design, using an engine gets in the way, right? Because at that point, you're not doing pure game design. But if people are interested, I'm happy to hear your ideas. Do, do, do. One reason that I'm excited by Godot is I don't care for C Sharp or languages used by most engines. Having a Python-like language, GDScript, is huge for me, says Chris. GDScript really clicked with me. Actually, Godot really clicked with me. I'll be honest, the main reason I fell in love with Godot is it just felt good. Like, it just clicked. The node system, the objects, the scene system. For some reason, it just clicked with my mind. Um, I will point out that's not everyone's experience. It took Ben about 20 minutes of just trying to figure out, so what exactly is a scene in Godot? Because it's not a Unity scene, it's not a prefab, what is it? Uh, not everyone just sees it and gets it. In the same way that I didn't just look at Unity and just go, oh, totally, like I had to work at it. Um, Absolutely. The, 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 there's pros and cons, right? It really depends what you're doing. Kabla, Kablami, um, Kablami Junior 96 is saying, which language will it be using? Yan will be building the projects in GDScript. I am then translating them at the end of the sections into C Sharp. So both GDScript and C Sharp. Yep. yep. Um, we have had people saying, will you be using GD native and looking at other languages? Not in this course, not without a really good reason to do so, because at that point, we start massively upping the complexity of the project, right? You, the, the amount of stuff you need to know to be really comfortable with GDScript, even without looking at another language, it's just not really within the scope of this course. Nice. Uh, Chris. I'm going to share a link to the board game course in a minute. I've just realized we haven't got a shortcut for that, so I'm just making one. Yeah, we do. Uh, we, don't, we don't think we do. I think you shared it with me once, not that I've ever used it. Um, no, I think Chris, haven't. follow on. I wonder if some C-sharp fans will be tempted to try out GD scripts. Um, I know some have, because some people backed specifically to try C-sharp in Godot. Like, that was the reason they backed the Kickstarter. And they, then they said, well, I'll give GD script a, a try. For some people, it's just like, I don't like it, which is fair. And others just, okay, yeah, that's kind of useful. Can you tell us about Cube Dude, says Jason Lee Dev. Um, yes, he likes long walks on the beach. He's a little square. Um, Cube Dude was designed by Mikey for the character creators course, I believe. Character creation course. Yeah, the Blender character creator course, which I put a link to in the chat just a couple of minutes ago. I'll put another link in there in a second. I'm just busy setting up this shortcut that we really need for your board game course. It's going to be uh, Udemy BGD. Board I thought game it really design, was. Yeah, just um, no, it wasn't there. It was never there. So it's going to go in the chat right yeah. now. Um, the, what was I saying? It's gone. Cube Dude. Okay. Um, the Cube Dude Kickabout is a very simple 3D game, right? So it's got a camera that doesn't move. It's got four lights that track a ball. The ball is a physics object with no script. And then you have two players that are kinematic bodies that move around. 
Why don't you just show them the project again as you've got it ready to go? Uh, I haven't, but I can It do. is possible, Chris, eh, to mix and match GD Script and C Sharp in one project, yes. And yes. that's a, probably a good idea. Um, yes. For sometimes, well, look, the main difference between them is one is a dynamically typed and the other is a statically typed language. So when you're doing the classic example, I keep mentioning and getting bored of mentioning it, but it's fine, um, is importing a JSON file that may have different formats, much easier done in GD Script. Uh, refactoring, renaming code reliably with strict typing, easier done in C Sharp. Um, there's lots of pros and cons, and it is good to get into the situation where you can dive between them. Cool, Jan, show them a bit more about Cube Dude, and then we'll end this stream, by the way, in about 10 minutes, and then we'll have like a five minute switch over, and then we'll be playing Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Nothing can possibly we'll go wrong. All right, so we have a ball here. This ball is a, is a mesh instance. It's just a sphere with a texture map, right? Um, and an admission map. We have a pitch. Um, which is just this pitch around which I've got two separate invisible walls um, well, two groups of walls. I've got inner walls, which stop the ball and outer walls that stop the player. The reason is otherwise the ball gets stuck in the corner and that just didn't work. If the ball crosses either of the goal lines, it'll register a goal. If a goal is registered, players will have control removed from them for I think three seconds, score will go up, the background will change color, and then everything will reset to its, to its spawn position. Um, the ball has no script, it's just physics. If the kinematic body pushes the ball, it moves, that's all it is. The final fancy thing is these lights are focused on the ball and they all have, let's go back to the lights, where are you guys? Um, doo -doo -doo, lighting. Um, you guys won't see this naming convention. This is because I come from a theater background. For me, it's just easier when talking about lights to go downstage left, upstage left, downstage right, upstage right. We won't call them that um, unless you really want to. See this symbol here? This is a group. If I go to the nodes and the groups, you'll see that they're all part of groups light. Lighting as a node or a spatial because the basic, the node 2D is the most basic 2D node, spatial is the most basic three, um, has a simple physics process function. And what it's going to do is going to get the ball and then everything that is in the group lights will have the function look at called, which is just a oh, basic yeah. built-in function. It goes like this, lights, string reference, look at string reference. Just a well, I'll show you how it works. Let's go to call group. Syntax. Call group, string, group, string, method, and then uh, variable arguments, right? Yeah. Um, and yes, we'll tidy up string reference. A huge amount of Godot's API requires string references, guys. Get over it. We have kind of a we've got a, We've got a bit of a solution. Um, but at the end of the day, in a dynamically typed language like this, there's... It's just what it is, right? You're going to have more it's, more... it's more of just strings that are interpreted at runtime than the highly tokenized, highly typed safe C-sharp, which is more living code at, uh, at pre-run time, the IDE. Right. The compiler has the opportunity to give you a lot more help and guidance. The, di the, the nature of this dynamic language is that it gets parsed and run at runtime. So it is just a slightly different beast, but we're still doing our best. And this is why it's so cool doing both C Sharp and GD Script. We're doing our best to take the best practices from C Sharp, where you, where, you, know, you say string reference, and then you do something about it. We're doing our best to push those best practices in, into GD Script. And we're also doing our best to go, hang on, how come it's so easy to say import um, a JSON files of different types in GDScript, but so hard in C Sharp, we have to write all these different classes. Yeah. And then we're going to push ourselves in C Sharp and say, how can we use generics? How can we uh, use external better libraries? So basically, not settle for, uh, for the for, go for the highest common denominator. Yeah, if something's yeah. better in GDScript, let's try and do it better in C Sharp. If something's better in C Sharp, let's try and do it better in GDScript. Now, one thing that is very interesting here, now Ben, you haven't seen this, right? But you remember how signals are working. So if I'm emitting a si signal, connecting to a signal, I have to put the path in here. Right? With a group, I don't have to do this. So rather than saying, um, connect all four of these things, so connect uh, light one, light two, light three, light four to path, whatever it is, right? I can just say, get to the tree and call group. Everything that's in the tree that is in this group will have this function called with these arguments, which is brilliant. Right, So it means if you've got a huge game or a lot of moving parts and you don't want to connect everything this way, one line of code just connects everything, which I think is really neat. Um, for me, that's one of the benefits of something like GDScript. I can look at this, understand what it does, and it just works. 
So we're, uh, somebody's asking, say, hey, somebody, somebody that's almost rude. Um, do, perceptual. Oh, and, and uh, everybody to say somebody when it was perceptual who's our most, who's I am our most loyal subscriber. I don't deserve you, perceptual. Leave me. Um, the, do I have any concerns with GDScript going the way of Boo and Unity Script in C Sharp? I don't think so. I think Juan's pretty committed to it. Talking about Juan Linietsky, the person who founded um, Godot, I've just posted a link to our series of Godot live streams that we did during the Kickstarter. One of those, probably the top one, is why he created the Godot engine with Juan Linietsky. So uh, that's what got us all off the ground with live streaming. Check a look at that. Do, if you want to, subscribe to our Unity YouTube channel. You're not going to get a lot of stuff because we don't put a lot of stuff on there. Uh, but we'll be ready when we do start a YouTube initiative. You'll be ready to be the first supporters over there. That won't be for months, by the way. We're focused on getting Twitch up to critical mass at the moment. Yeah. So just going to have a quick look through some of the other questions. Question, will we continue to take input from seasoned programmers like Lars creating further content? Yes. Um, we will, although I'm mainly taking the lead now on um, on the, the kind of architectural direction of it. We're taking it in our own direction. We The most valuable feedback, as always, is early on in these things. Uh, but we will continue to talk to and listen to Lars's feedback because he's awesome. And honestly, um, even if you don't question, yeah. run on that feedback, it, it's useful to have that perspective every now and again. Next question. Um, do you have any concerns? Oh, you answered that one. Uh, that's not a question. That's not a question. There's no more questions. Is oh, right. Pure Python dynamic language as well. Is pure Python dynamic language as well? Yeah, yeah, it is, exactly. Python is a dynamic language as well, dynamically typed. It means you can do weird stuff like you can, um, you can say, you know, var. Um, well, I could show you weird stuff. You can show, you just, you can change the type at runtime. Of, uh, you know, a variable that was an integer can become a string, can become a whatever. Um, right. That's the point. And yes, Python's like that. And yes, and we'll be Look, teaching Python in the longer right term. Here, Godot, by the way. Variable speed. I haven't told you it's an integer. I haven't told you it's a float. It just knows. If I want to change this at some point and I say, um, uh, not var, uh, speed equals Bob, that will work. Can, you can right. do type inference in C sharp where we can say auto. Um, is it auto in C sharp or is it var? It's var in C sharp, auto in C. We can say var something equals seven and it'll infer the type. But what we can't do this? is in change that type at runtime. What's up? I've, I've used two conventions. I've used and and, but I've written not. Why don't I just write and not? There we go. <laughs> what was I anyway. thinking? <laughs> No worries. Well, we'll be doing, we'll be deeply ripping and apart and, and reviewing this project Next soon step. anyway. So, uh, you changed your mic. I noticed I could hear you at the door. Bindi, yeah. So what I'm doing right now is I'm using a, um, so that we can lead these stretches and stuff. I'll stand over here for a minute. I've got a radio mic pack. I don't know why I'm talking louder. You're just as, you're going to hit better hear me just as well wherever I am, even if I'm down the garden, uh, which I could do for fun. But you are um, blurry. What's that? You're very blurry. I will be over here because the camera is a very small uh, focal like, depth. So yep. if I'm here and I focus and I go pin sharp like so, then at any other distance I'm going to be not so focused. I could I could um, open up the app, uh, close down the aperture, uh, and then I'd get I'd get less light in and I'd get grainy, but high depth of field. Anyway, yeah. So I'm using a radio mic pack at the moment. That is so that in the next stream we haven't got much time to do the changeover to the next stream. So I've got a checklist as to what I need to do. I'm going to need this bomb diffusal manual if I end up being the person who's doing the diffusing, the advice. Um, and I'm not allowed to see the screen, so I'm going to have to face around this way and still be able to do the bomb diffuser. I'll probably sit down at that point. So that's why I'm wearing that mic. Uh, hopefully the sound's all right on this mic. It's not going to be as good as the Rode Podcaster, um, but hopefully it's all right. I did try this puppy earlier, it was slightly off topic, this NT-USB that Mikey uses. Um, and you can sit a lot further away from it, and it's a uh, condenser mic, I think. Is it? Ele uh, yeah, electric condenser mic. Um, it just doesn't get the bass for me. It's not. I mean, Mikey's ba voice is so manly; he doesn't need, doesn't matter. But with the road, I just get much more present well, sound. Well, you can. So. It just takes extra steps, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do post processing. I want it. I like my life simple. Anyway, if the audio is good, then the audio is good. Um, uh, we yeah, have to play a cool. game together that is awesome. Says Jasper Reykjavik. Um We don't have to, but we've been Reykjavik. doing it since we're eight. Yeah, keep talking and nobody explodes is the next stream up. So there'll be in five minutes or so, five to ten minutes, we'll stop this stream. There'll be a very short gap, so just stay here while we set up for keep talking and nobody explodes. And uh, we'll be getting ready to go. It's an awesome game. Don't buy it just yet because it'd be great if the first person ever bought a game using our link below the stream because I don't know if it works. I've enabled it on Twitch and it's really weird and it tells me to accept some conditions and then I don't know if it's worked. So if somebody would buy keep talking and nobody explodes under the stream, we'll find out. Uh, yep. Who knows? These things are black magic. 
So other questions, Jan, that we need to answer in here. By the way, thank you to everybody who's subscribing. Loads of people are taking advantage of the Twitch Prime subscription. I do want to say that if you are going to subscribe at Tier 2, here are the benefits of Tier 2. I'll just put that in the chat. Um, one of the chief benefits of Tier 2, one second, is, and excuse the formatting of that, is that we will link to your, your Twitch channel automatically each week we refresh the list. And you'll, you'll get a link from our homepage, which is growing and getting more popular, straight to your Twitch channel. And you'll be getting customer moats shortly as slots faster than we can make them. But you'll have extra emotes and you'll support us at a 240% of what you're supporting at us at on the tier one. Also, we could use two or three more tier three subscribers because we want plenty of people for those great code reviews. I had a wonderful um, testimonial for our first code review. I'll give you both a testimonial and a link to that tier three code review so you can see what it's about in a minute. Yan, slam some more questions while I grab those things, mate. A uh, question from Bindi. You were talking about public versus private the other day. My streaming was horrible. Do you remember which video is in so I could look it up? I don't. What's my video? Public versus private. Oh, there's loads of videos. Um, was this about Godot? I think it mm. was. was no, it? it wasn't. We're we talking about Unlikely. public versus. Was I no, it was RPG. It was RPG because I caught part of that. Ah, uh, man, I don't know at this stage was, which of those it you were would discussing. Have... It was the very early quest structure, I think it was, before the stream with Sam and Rick. Yeah, it wouldn't have been the upgrading one. Um, I'll just have a quick look for you. Quest triggers, uh, foundations of dialogue. Don't know actually came up which one code that was. Too. I don't know. There's a so, question here. I'm having trouble don't, reading. Don't, public don't, hold on one sec, yeah. Let me just finish on that. Don't worry about that though, because firstly, these videos will be going to YouTube um, shortly, uh, in, in, in 60 days at the most, but I'll do them sooner if you want it sooner, where you'll get auto transcripts, which you can search. Also, we'll be making a summarized Udemy course of these streams. Um, so there are going to be ways to index into it, but I, I feel your pain that you can't find your way into that, and that is a pain. Um, yep. But just bear with us, and we will, we will index these better for you. And as I say, YouTube will come to the rescue because it auto-transcribes, it auto which is cool. Question here it also, from Gnome. It also came up in the code review, and I'll find you that code review, and I'll give you the testimonial. So go ahead, Yen. Um, I'm sorry I'm asking this name. Your name's coming up in purple. Purple and black is hard on my eyes. Um, Gnoevenimente. Why are you guys completely ignoring your game maker course? Heartbeast did a great job with it. He did do a great job with it. I love that course. Um, I don't know that we're completely ignoring it. Um, ben, would you like to yeah, take this one? Can you clar clarify that? Um, I've heard a few people say that Ben's not answering questions very well in the chat, but I did speak to him about it. He did say he'd get back onto it. Do you mean not responding to questions in the chat? Do you mean why aren't we building more Game Maker content on top of why that? Why aren't we talking uh, about it on Twitch? Is that the question? Why aren't we talking about it on Twitch? Um, yeah, just I'll talk to all three of those, if, but give us some guidance and I'll give you an answer because I was actually speaking to Benjamin today, so we're very keen to do more with him. But yeah, just yeah. give us a guidance. I'm going to go and find you this um, code review video. And I'm also going to give you, show you a link to this testimonial for the code reviews for those of you who want to consider becoming a tier three and really upping your game. I'm going to play with these puppets as you have more questions. Uh, for those of you who don't know, by the way, the um, inspiration for Hoppy Days came about through the YouTube video, I Think I'm a Bunny, which is one of my favorite songs ever. Uh, and then I started looking for purple bunny video game assets and it spawned a course. Um, question from Morph Breed. Would you say that learning a new game engine will improve the skills in another engine? Yes, absolutely. Um, if Even if you never go back to that engine, it's like learning another language, right? You, you really understand your own language once you start looking at other languages. So uh, there was a quote from, I think it was Evelyn Waugh. Um, you don't understand your own country until you've lived in two others. I could be completely misquoting who said that. Um, yes, the perspective you get from looking at how Unity, Unreal, Godot, Game Maker solve these problems will just improve your coding, your game design. So absolutely, you should look at, I mean, my, my go-to is learn everything, right? Learn everything about everything that you can. Absolutely. I'm, you know, you take two points and they could be on any type of curve, whatever. You take a third point that's in line with the two, and the chances are you may have a line, right? So when the third dot connects, you may be spot starting to spot patterns. And you really do do that when you see your third engine. So I strongly suggest you, you 
you that you see three engines and use three engines and then it probably is a good idea to specialize on one or at least for a while you know so at least do a couple of projects on one but but see three before you start because really you can save yourself so much time the sort of games we're doing in godot are just suited to godot if you want to yeah. produce an end product like that use godot it's going to do it quicker the sort of games we're doing in unity are pretty suited to unity and the sort of games that we the visual e end of the games that we do in unreal are just more suited to unreal so just look at the projects we choose to do in the engines are very fairly typical of the games look at the games that are out there on the marketplace um, and really do have more than one engine. There's really quite, I'll, I'll tell you a little anecdote about the reflex, reflection in a bit if there's time, but let me just finish doing what I'm doing in the chat. Question from anyway. Jason Lee Dev. How many lines of code a day is a good goal without being unrealistic? Um, how long is a piece of string? I'll be honest, I've never managed to motivate myself with quotas like that. Like my, my brain just doesn't work that way. It also depends on what you're doing and in what engine. Like if you're using GD script, you'll probably end up writing less code for most basic functionality. Until you start getting to things like AI or something where you're recursing a lot of hot loops very quickly. Um, I don't know how you would use that as a metric. Um, what, the number of lines by, of code written in a day? Yeah, without being unrealistic. I would go by how many tasks. Today I'm gonna to solve well, this problem, right? That's That's the goal I would set. I mean, it is a, it is an, it's a somewhat interesting me metric. There's a difference in the number of lines of code you've written and the number of lines of code that survive your refactors. So you, if you add 300 in a day and, and delete 200, so you've made a net 100, that's, that's, you've made a net 100. So firstly, the net is, is probably more important than the number you add and then delete. Um, lines of code, of course, it's a wrong metric because the less lines, the better for the same behavior. Um, I mean, for example, I uh, on a stream the other day, which is on a stream where I'm trying to entertain and everything in, the, uh, in an intermediate topic like the RPG, I think I wrote 75 lines in about an hour uh, of new code. There was a delta of 75 lines in an hour. Uh, but it really depends on your level. It I, I'm not sure why you're asking the question, what, why you want to judge yourself against that. Um, it's better to write a few lines of smart code that really shift the business needle than a lot of lines of dumb code that don't. Yeah. So. I, I'm more task focused than I am lines focused, to be honest. And there are times when I'm trying to solve a problem and I wrote, write no code in that day, but I've solved that problem. And that to me is a good day, right? Uh, question here from, I hope that's answered your question. Let us know if it hasn't. Question here from Raziel91. Raziel sounds angelic to me. It's a nice name. Um, but by the way, quickly, has this stream been super stable, guys? Please tell me in the chat. I'm really interested. We've had a lot of problems recently. And mm -hmm. I've now dedicated an entire broadband line just to the streaming. Um, I'm still using my Terravice hardware box. But are we good? Question from Raziel91. Uh, it's important not to confuse Raziel91 with the other 90 Raziel. So uh, ha will you ever consider making a simple character creator, like a poor version of Skyrim or Fallout in any of the, the engines? Um, well, we've actually committed to doing character customization in a game in Godot. That'll be pretty simple, right? Using sliders to change between textures or styles or something like that. Um, so we'll show you the very basics. I don't think we'll be making like an APB level character creator because that would be insane. But yes, it's definitely on the cards. Um, some buffering earlier, stable for me. Internet keeps cutting off. Mine too. Stream's pretty good. Slowed down, blurred once or twice. Uh, but, um, simple to me. So Keith has, uh, sorry, Calicane has asked it before, will there be any projects that uh, has both 2D and 3D elements you in the same about. project? The GUI is What's 2D, that? the game is 3D, and we're overlaying them at the same time, right? So all the scores and the title at the top of the page, that's all 2D. And we can probably do it with other games as well. Okay, so Perceptual Lucidity seems to think we are doing better with our stream. He watches a lot of them, he should know. So hopefully uh, this, is, this is cracking, cracking it. So um, yeah, good, good, that would be awesome. Um, oh yeah, the sound may be a bit echoey. Uh, it could be, that's probably my, this mic, which is a bit less noise cancelling, picking up Yan coming out of my speakers. I could wear headphones, but then I can't move around so easily. So uh, Art, tell me, by the way, if he sounds echoey, uh, does Yan sound echoey now? Yan say, oh my God, I sound echoey now. Yan, say something. Oh, I sound echoey now. Why would I say that? That's a weird thing to say. So does he sound less echoey when I'm over there? If he does, it's because this little puppy is picking up my screen and that's something to do better. To, Jasper we, we, Reik, that Reik Reik says, imagine a motion capture course. Okay. okay. <laughs> Done, imagined. <laughs> yeah. 
Awesome. Guys, we're going to need to wind up and switch to keep talking and nobody go boom. So please hold this space super tight. In fact, I'll do most of my prepping for that stream without stopping the stream. So, I will. Um, I'm going to the bathroom. Okay. Well, Jan will be out the picture. I will only briefly stop the stream when I have to actually change the name. But otherwise, you can see behind the scenes, I'll talk you through what I'm doing. So we're going to run this with our faces, beautiful as they are, on the right-hand side, like this, I think, Jan. Yep. Um, anyway, I'm going to minimize you so I can get the manual up. Uh, yep, you have folks, fun. I'll be there Thank in a you second. so much for joining this first Godot stream. Let us know if you want to see things differently, what else you want to see in the future ones. Uh, we're going to make these regular. And uh, I'm going to hand over to Ben while I go prepare myself for diffusing explosives. Thanks for telling me there was no echo from the corner code vamp. Um, I am going to keep this mic on, but what I'm going to do is just turn my, the volume of, the, of Yan down a bit. So give me two seconds. Go away, Siri. Okay, Yan will be slightly quieter now. And uh, I'm going to have the chat there now. We should have Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. I want some feedback on the volume levels on that. So I'm going to give it, uh, going to give it about that. So hopefully you're just subtly getting the music from Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes right now. And then the sound effects are set up to be twice the, uh, the level. So I've got it set up like this. Half, uh, half music, 100% sound effects. And I've got it also set up with um, the whole of Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is half volume so it doesn't drown us out. So that should work well, hopefully, with any luck. I'll leave the chat there, it'll be kind of fun. Uh, Jan is not going to be able to see the, sc see the screen, uh, he's, and he's not going to cheat by watching the stream either, because that would be boring. So for those of you who don't know this game, well, I'll introduce it in a second. So I'm just going to switch over now to a different stream. I'll be back in about uh, one minute, something like that, maybe less. Okay, push a button up here, I'll be back soon.